Today we're going to have a look at a pen from a brand that I have definitely reviewed a couple of pens of from of made of that by that brand uh, before but this is a new one interesting uh, white cardboard sleeve and then a box you may recognize this box maybe you don't doesn't matter it's an Edison pen the Edison pen company I like the Edison pen company I uh, I have been a uh, thinking I've been a customer since 2012 that's when I bought my first Edison and they have never disappointed me uh, one thing that I really appreciate about Edison is that they have a lifelong warranty and I have definitely needed that not because of well actually partially because of me and partially because of other things but I I have made use of it twice it was a very pleasant experience and the nice thing is that you really feel like you are taken care of and that was great because not every company does that so on a personal note that is something I really appreciate in a pen company because more and more pen companies are pushing down their warranties up to five years three years a year with Edison it's lifelong and they will take care of you so that's that's really great now what I'm excited to talk about today is this pen it's an Edison Menlo I have reviewed the Menlo before but this is the new filling system the draw filler okay so I'm going to cover the parts of the pen and tell you what I like about it what I don't like about it and I'll do a writing sample but a little bit more about the pens you always you get a pretty complete package so you you get the the box and um, there is a little Edison bookmark which I, I do like I read so I mean I do like bookmarks now uh, you get a little uh, actually this is also a bookmark it's a, a little uh, a nib thing I won't I won't unpack it now but it's a little nib thing you can you can sort of move that like a paper clip and put that on a page that's nice and then you, you have the box right but along with this you also get a couple of uh, well I, I'm, I'm more information documentation I should say there is this uh, I'm going to compress this for you just for, for time uh, reasons I'm not going to read out the whole thing but what it says is you bought a clear pen and um, clear pens uh, the issue with clear pens is that if you move them around a lot ink may splat on the inside of the cap it has a center band ink can get caught so what they recommend with a clear pen is to use it as a desk pen and don't carry that around and shake it around too much uh, this is a little bit about draw fillers uh, I like that you get a you just get adequate documentation including a QR code including a tiny arrow so you can really read up about the filling system that you have purchased how to use it etc which is great some of these uh, filling systems are a little bit more exotic they're not cartridge converters so it's nice especially if you're not very familiar with with fountain pens or with that specific system that you get to read exactly how to use it and finally you get this which I think is actually pretty cool and uh, this is a a letter and it says created with an Edison pen on our automated pen plotter and then Waterman Serenity Blue. So they actually write you a letter to thank you for purchasing the pen. And yes, it's made in a plotter, but it has my name on it. Pretty, you know, so I, I, I like that. I, it's, it's a nice gesture. Okay, let's talk about this pen. How did I get this pen? I have this pen on loan from the Edisons, uh, the Edisons, the Greys, pardon me. Brian and Andrea Gray are the, uh, the founders of the company. I uh, I can honestly say we go way back and this is their new filling system uh, which I think is very interesting I met up with Brian Gray at the DC show 2017 and he lent me this uh, to do a review so it's, it's gonna go back to him as well uh, but I uh, let's let's talk about this pen now I have covered a Menlo before but that was a long time ago so I'm just gonna go through the whole thing of discussing the parts of the pen and then I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that that specific filling system which is new here okay because before the 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 what you could get an interesting filling system on this that was a, a, a pneumatic sort of filler where you would you would push a bar it was a rubber diaphragm in it and it, or latex diaphragm in it I think and it, it drew up ink by creating a, a vacuum it, which is kind of like what a, what a Parker Vacuumatic had but this is a bit different let's start just just with the parts of the pen all right so clearly I mean it's it's a clear pen right clearly uh, finial nice I like the Menlo I really find it a very pleasant model nice clip I've always liked the Edison clip 
it's it's uh, it's nice to use. It's it's soft enough to to use and tight enough to use. So it's it's perfect. Little center band. I like that this cap is completely clear. I love that you can see the nib and you can kind of see the issue because I have been a bad boy and I have been carrying this pen around so you can see that some ink becomes aerosolized and it just flies into the uh, the, the threads there. I'm exaggerating nicely here. Uh, and, and you see that that's just an issue. For some people that would really be a problem uh, and I, I understand that if that's the case either don't get a clear pen or put it on your desk. And my standard advice is, if you never want ink on your fingers, buy a mechanical pencil. Then a fountain pen is not for you. I sound so snarky sometimes. I'm, I'm really a nice person, you know, but I mean, it's just, that's just the way it is. You, if you're going to use a fountain pen, you're going to get ink on your fingers. It's just the way it is. It will happen at some point or another. But in any case, it's purely an aesthetic issue. It's not going to destroy your pen if there is some ink on the inside of the cap. It's just that it may not look the way you like it. Okay, you have this, uh, I, I guess that could be an ink window, but of course the whole pen is an ink window as it is clear. Um, I like that cap, has a nice lip, it's a good size. Um, barrel, well clearly nice clear barrel, so that's fun to use. Um, I shouldn't have uncapped that yet. Here we have that draw filler, right? So I'll come back to that in a second. End cap there nice and clean very very well polished it's a super clear pen so definitely effort time and effort was put into that it's really clear it's not cloudy in any point of the pen which is really neat so we have a big ink reservoir this holds about two milliliters of ink which doesn't sound like a lot but it is a standard converter is about 0.7 milliliters so i mean you you really have a, a substantial amount of ink in there nice number six nib laser engraved with the edison pen logo feed of course uh, and the section as you can see tapers down flares out a little bit and you have some threads here okay size of the pen I've always found this to be a very comfortable size and I think this is the type of pen size that appeals to a lot of people it's not a giant oversize by any means but it's very nice very comfortable to use comfortable section pleasant to hold and if you really want to you can post it very securely and you have a really I think nicely uh, sized pen that that is narrow enough to be used for people with smaller hands but it's substantial enough to be used for people by people with bigger hands so it works okay what's this filling system all about it's actually a fairly simple system but I like it usually simple things work really well I think we can consider this and maybe I'm wrong but that's how I look at this um, I consider this to be sort of the sequel to the uh, the, the uh, filling system they used to have before this uh, which had a little sort of a, a little kind of like a rod it kind of looked like this except it was metal and there was a rubber diaphragm in there you push that rod in and you create a vacuum with that diaphragm by, by pushing that out and pulling it back in again and that draws up ink that's a, a fairly old system that's been around for a long time but the problem is you deal with a diaphragm that's rubber or latex or some material like that, a soft material. I had a, uh, uh, a Menlo like that with that filling system and I destroyed the diaphragm and that's one of the two stories about the Edison customer service. What happened is I put in an ink and the ink destroyed the latex. That can happen. It was a noodler's ink. Listen to what I'm saying. That was just a noodler's ink. I'm not saying that every noodler's ink will do that, but that particular noodler's ink liquefied the diaphragm. That's an objective fact. It was fine when it went in, it was liquefied when it came out. So the ink was at fault. All right? End of discussion. That's a problem. And I have the feeling that it was a problem for more people. Now there is this system. And this is an interesting system. You unscrew this end cap and you have a little piston, right? Now there's ink in this. This is probably a terrible idea, so here's a very big towel which I'm going to put down. Very simple system. There's a breather tube in there, which you can see, right? Um, there's an O-ring there. It looks to me like there's two O-rings, but I could be wrong. 
It's a very simple system. You put it into a bottle of ink, you push down this piston, you draw it back up, that creates a vacuum, and you draw up ink. And because there's a little breather tube, the ink is going to flow through that a couple of drops, then you push that uh, this little uh, lever down again, you pull it back out, you keep repeating that, and you will see that every time you do it, the barrel fills up a bit more until it is pretty much full. You never get it entirely full, there's always a little bit of an air bubble, that's just the way things are, but it still holds a lot of ink. So you can do that with these kinds of things. Always remember uh, those o-rings can get stuck a little bit, so sometimes it's, it's, I always think it's a good idea to give that a very gentle twist before you try to push it. Now, I'm just going to be very very careful here, but I just want to see you, I uh, want to show you that ink moves up, so I'm just going to push that there. You see, there we go. Okay, that's all I'm going to do. But I'm sure you can picture how that will work out on an everyday basis. Now, I asked Brian about these O-rings because, of course, it's one thing to say we don't have that latex part anymore. But what are, what are O-rings? They're kind of rubber too. What if... I mean, is that really safe? Is that really going to be more resistant to ink? And he said yes, because uh, I think he said they use silicone o-rings, but in any case they use a type of o-ring that is chemical resistant. So in all, that should lead to a system that is more robust, more reliable, and that you can put more, I'm just going to say, exotic inks in, right? If you want to be sure that your pen is never damaged, you should only use washable blue. You know, but sometimes you want to experiment a bit, you want to put in interesting ink, and if you have rubber parts that may not work so well. So I think this is a great solution. Now, let's talk about what I like about the pen, what do I not like about the pen. I think there's a lot to like. I think Edison pens are very attractive. There's a couple of models you can pick, uh, you can choose from. The craftsmanship is good. They're well made. Everything, is, everything that should be rounded off is rounded off. There is no sharp corners, even these threads I can kind of feel it when I really rub my fingers down uh, on them like this, but as soon as I hold it to right, the section is big enough, I don't, I don't feel any sharp threads. So in that regard, it's, it's, it, it, it really works. Um, well made. As I said, well polished. I mean, this cap is clear. This is a, a clear acrylic that has been polished really well. So that's fantastic. Again, I think that the, the customer service that may not pertain to a specific pen, but it's comforting to know that should anything happen, they'll take care of it. And there is no cause for concern whatsoever. So I think that's, that's really neat. I like, as to this specific pen, I like the shape and size. I think it's very comfortable. I like this filling system. It's, it's fun. It's, it's you know, a little new. Um, and I, I know these kinds of things, you know, it's sort of... The part that we call that the past repeating itself. I know that we have seen this sort of sort of stuff before, but here's the thing: Marco Pierre White, chef, um, had a very nice quote that I think is is very applicable in these situations. We do not live in an age of invention; we live in an age of refinement, and I think that's what's happening. Right? You can bring back an older filling system like that pneumatic filler because it's just not available. It's not available on most modern pens, and now it is. So I think that's very neat. Okay, what do I not like about the pen? Well, there isn't a whole lot. I think the pen is, is pretty nice, but I know that there is one thing that people are going to point out, and that is that these pens are not extremely cheap, all right? Edison has their regular line, and then they have their signature line. The signature lines, uh, you, you have the opportunity to, to get these interesting filling systems on, several models you can you can choose from you can also pick your material and they start at $350 for this this kind of thing if you wanted to buy this $350 for this with a steel nib and then it's $450 for a gold nib isn't that an awful lot $350 well you could say yes if you look at a, a Pelican M600 uh, I think that's about 280 285 and then you get a gold nib and you have a piston filler but that is basically a mass-produced pen, right? These pens are made by a couple of people. They're not stamped out by 700 billion a day. I'm exaggerating, but I hope you get the point. So they are handmade. Uh, they are, I mean, handmade. 
machine made, but you know what I mean, that people are involved in the process, not just the machine spitting out Edison pens. Um, the, the polishing, as far as I understand it, is, is done at least to a degree by hand, and the results are there, as far as I'm concerned. So I have to admit, I kind of understand this price. Uh, if there is this much, um, I don't want to say manpower, because there's definitely women involved, but I mean, human power involved, I understand that, that the, 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 the price goes up a bit. So I don't think it is exceptionally highly priced. Um, I mean, we, we see a lot of, of interesting acrylic pens now that go up to $300, $400, and that's just a cartridge converter. Right, so if you do get a signature line like this, you can pick your model, you can pick your filling system, usually, and you can pick your material. So you can pretty much personalize your entire pen. And I, I understand that there is some cost involved with that. Okay, enough of this. We need to see how the pen writes. I had no issues with writing, it wrote straight out of the box. Brian uh, uh, has a look at every nib before it leaves the warehouse, so that's always great. Let's see how it writes. Pictures of the pen, as well as measurements will be on the website, sbrebrown.com. I hope this was useful so far, and I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Okay, I thought I would just uh, try and show you how this uh, this pen fills. Um, because it's kind of fun. Let me just push that little bit of ink out. Okay, so one thing you, you want to do with this kind of filling system is don't, don't try to fill up the pen like that, because that, that doesn't work. You really need to give this pen a, a little bit of time to build up a vacuum. So I'm just going to, the, the draw filler is pushed in all the way, and I'm just now just going to pull it out slowly. I didn't have it in the ink deeply enough, but that's okay. We'll just have to do that a couple of times anyway. You give it a second until no more ink is drawn up, and you can see it's just flowing through that breather tube. Right, push it out push it in and draw it in again. And if you keep doing this at a steady pace, you see that the pen fills up. Now you're never going to fill it up completely, that's just the way it is, so it's always going to be a bit of an air bubble, but that's pretty much all there's to it. And then you have a filled pen. Okay, so here we go with The Edison Menlo draw filler. The nib is broad and the ink is frankly blue, which is uh, made by Robert Oster and it's a, um, an ink exclusive to Federalist pens. Let's do some writing. Nice, smooth writing, rich ink flow. I, I really enjoy this. Very pleasant. Bit of fast writing. Very nice. Not any, no, no skipping. That was me. Uh, so, a pretty solid writer. Wetness, no issues there, nice and wet. It's a simple steel nib, not advertised as flexi or whatever, uh, but as you can see you can gently squeeze out a little bit of line variation if you really want to, but it's not an ultra springy nib. For those of you who enjoy such a thing, there's reverse writing. Oops. It's a nice, as I said, nice wet nib, so you can definitely go from a broad to, I would say, a fine by turning it over, and the nib seems wet enough to actually do so comfortably and not have it dry out after two words. So for those of you who use their pens like that, I think this definitely allows you to do so. And that's all there's to it. So, thank you, Brian, for lending me this pen. I appreciate it. I hope this was useful. 
and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Bye.